Like, I feel like yeah. I still don't really know how the music industry works. And I've been <laughs> doing it now with all my time for like six dedicated years. And I feel like I'm still yeah. figuring it out. And yeah. I think that's something that people in general don't understand. It's like, oh, how do you become a lawyer? Well, you take a degree, yeah. then you do an internship somewhere. And then like, there is pretty much a path for how you'll do something. Whereas if you just go, <laughs> I want to do something in music, whether that's a podcast or yeah. being a manager of someone then people don't know how to get there so they're yeah. just trying everything out and seeing what sticks and people mm-hmm. have a harder time from the outside as understanding why would you choose that ah. or what's appealed to that ah. i think that's what it is a lot of the time it's like that the, makes sense uh, the unknown situation people don't really guess because i got that as well all the time yeah. like also oh, how how are you gonna how are you gonna play glastonbury yeah like, i don't know <laughs> i'm just gonna do it I'm just going to keep putting out songs and keep hoping people like it. Some point I'll speak to the right person and they'll make me go on that stage. Yeah. Like that whole thing. And I think if you're someone that likes your life being planned out for you or find comfort in that, it's hard to understand yeah. why we do what we do. Made it real with every touch And it all became too much I think you make me into someone that Welcome to the Musician Secrets podcast. Today, I have a singer songwriter with me. Um, I am so excited to introduce you because I'm an absolute fan of her songs. That's how I found you, and that's how I am able to chat with you today. Um, everyone, please welcome Ida Just. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So excited to talk to you. Yes, uh, we already had a little chat before, and um, I'm just glad that we get to talk music and about, especially about your singles. But before we get into all of that, um, just introduce yourself. Um, where are you from? Where are you tuning in from? And what got you into this beautiful music journey to where you are now? So, like you said, my name is Ida. I am from Denmark, Copenhagen. Yeah, Europe. Happened. Yes. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> exactly. I uh, moved to England in 15, 2015 to study music. Realized I loved being here and making music and the community and the culture and everything. And really inspired by the English music scene in general, how like much different stuff is going on here. I find so inspiring that you never have to put yourself into like small boxes of what can and can't work commercially as well. Yeah. Um, so I stayed here ever since and obviously I write songs, I produce songs, I make songs with other people, I write for other people as well sometimes mm. and then I put them out and that's <laughs> what I do. So what got you into music because I mean I did a little bit of research I know you come actually more from like a dance background like your parents like your family um, yeah um, they're uh, the way I understood it um I come from a dance background so what made you switch to music like I mean they're related of course but what made you go from, definitely not the oh same. I'm not, I mean it's kind of in your music videos which we're going to talk about later but uh like what was it where you're like oh I'm gonna go to London and I'm gonna do music now <laughs> I think so yeah I grew up literally dancing always I and then started doing it like with class and stuff from when I was two yeah and that was like celebrating my whole family so like my grandparents on like both sides met each other like at a jazz festival like my my, my dad's side's doing like music so they played in a band together and my mom's yeah. parents met each other at a dance class when they were 12 so my family's always been really creative in general mm. and then grow up and then my parents live from dancing or do dancing as like their profession and then mm. now obviously it's escalated so I started doing really commercial professional work from when I was a teenager mm. and then I it, I think it's a mixture of things why music happened quite organically. Like I was always singing mm. and my granddad on my dad's side was always encouraging me to do it more. Mm. And I think it just, it became an escapism. Whereas like dance was something I was really like determined and passionate. And like, that's what I thought I was going to do with my life. So mm. I put all my hard working hours into that. And then music mm. was just something that I did because I just loved doing it. 
yeah but I, I loved what music made me feel like and I was definitely like a bit of a different kid especially because on like Monday mornings I wouldn't be in for the school because I'd be doing some kind of like thing with dancing or something like that and then I think it just happened when I got into my teenage years and I was always like really introspective kid and like writing journals and yeah. poetry like in class instead of like listening to the teacher and stuff and then <laughs> I picked up the guitar and it just happened really naturally and then as I was doing both at the same time and got into like my like like eight 17 18 years old mm. I realized that the expression and what I got out of music was of way greater importance to me than what I got from dancing I felt like dancing had um become this thing that wasn't I just felt like personally the way I communicated my art artistic I don't know how to put it flair or whatever mm. how I connected myself to the most or with people was through words mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that felt to me so much more vulnerable yeah. than dancing ever did yeah. like dancing I felt like empowered mm -hmm. and strong and like part of something and then music which was way more personal to me uh -huh. maybe also because I didn't really tell people I was doing it and then it kind of just <laughs> like kind of my parents kind of found out at some point I was like writing songs like what are you doing with it like they and then they were just really supportive and then it just happened I just chose I guess I was just like you know what no I want to do music and then I realized looking back that I always wanted to do music but I was way too scared to do that because mm, yeah. I felt like that that was what my journey was meant to be my always my journey always felt like it was meant to be a dancer yeah and then I look back and I was like no I always had way more of a natural talent for music but I then I also think if I hadn't spent all those hours in a dancing class, I wouldn't have the same um, connection to music and rhythm and mm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Actually, I've never seen it from like a, from that perspective before. You know that it's because I mean, for me, music has always been like really personal. But I've never really seen it as like something that's so vulnerable because I thought, oh yeah, dancing is also like an expression, but it's true like you're not really using words um in that sense so you know that's yeah. um I think it depends on what you like how do you feel most comfortable I feel yeah. really comfortable talking to people yeah. I every time I'm going through something I need to speak about it a million times in order for me to feel better <laughs> and other people need to go for a run like yeah. that's how we different people communicate or like deal with their feelings and yeah. I always just have to talk about things yeah and then oh my god I can sing about it too and then I feel <laughs> even better about it like <laughs> whether that's like really dwelling on an emotion or like you know yeah. whatever the song is about yeah I think that gave me such an, a new euph euphoria that yeah. I never experienced with dancing but then yeah. also dancing is part of who I am and I do yeah. it every single day yeah. in my kitchen and then that's a different different thing yeah no, it's it's really cool because I think a lot of people and me included, it took me a really long time to accept like music is my thing. Like this is not just, uh, you know, something I do on the side anymore, or just a hobby or, you know, something where I'm like, you know, it, it makes me happy. I feel fulfilled. I feel, you know, great when I'm making music and that's what I want to yeah. do. You know, everyone's like, Oh, get a real job or what's your plan B or are you still doing the music thing? And, you know, we've heard it all, right. It's just like, no, hundred percent. I think that was also a really big part of it. And in, in Denmark, there is in general, this very socialistic uh, old term called Yendelon, which basically is about like not thinking you are better than anyone else and that you can do more than anyone else. I don't know if you've ever heard about that in Germany, mm -mm. but it's this thing that molds society into kind of having the mentality of, oh, if you are the person that likes to stand in front of the stage, then you're a little bit of like, a, mm, we don't like you. Oh, like, okay. You should be graceful and not want to stand in front of that stage. So when I told people uh, that I wanted to do music when I was a, like a teenager and I was kind of realizing, I got comments like, really, you think you can do that? Like, mm, are you sure about that? And I was like, yeah, I think I think, I think, I want to try this thing. And and like so many people just didn't believe me. Uh, yeah. Because like, why would you believe someone that you've never seen do something? Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I can cut apples with one hand. Like, no, you can't. I haven't seen you do <laughs> 
why should I believe you can do that? <laughs> yeah, that's the same great. thing. <laughs> I don't know where that analogy come, came from. That was <laughs> I love it though. I mean, it, it's, I mean, and that's usually the, the reactions that we get as musicians, like mm. every time, like, I, I hated the question. The one question that I got a lot was, what are you going to do with a music degree? And I'm like, it was just a matter of time. Like whenever I was talking with someone or whatnot and the conversation took longer than three or four minutes, I knew the question is going to come up at some point. And it just annoyed me. I'm like, don't ask me, <laughs> don't ask me this yeah. question. You know, it, it's, it, it, you know, shows a lot of their mindset. Um, and, you know, I can't blame them for not understanding how the music industry works and, um, you know, especially yeah. now through the internet. And also, do we know? Like, I feel like yeah. I still don't really know how the music industry works. And I've been <laughs> doing it now with all my time for like six dedicated years. And I feel like I'm still yeah. figuring it out. And yeah. I think that's something that people in general don't understand. It's like, oh, how do you become a lawyer? Well, you take a degree yeah. then you do an internship somewhere. And then like, there is pretty much a path for how you'll do something. Whereas if you just go, <laughs> I want to do something in music whether that's a podcast or yeah. being a manager of someone then people don't know how to get there so they're yeah. just trying everything out and seeing what sticks and people mm -hmm. have a harder time from the outside of us understanding why would you choose that uh, or what's appealed to that uh, I think that's what it is a lot of the time it's like that the, makes sense uh, the unknown situation people don't really guess because I got that as well all the time yeah. like oh so how how are you gonna how are you gonna play Glastonbury yeah like, I don't know. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to keep putting out songs and keep hoping people like it. Some point I'll speak to the right person and they'll make me go on that stage. Yeah. Like that whole thing. And I think if you're someone that likes your life being planned out for you or find comfort in that, it's hard to understand yeah. why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. well then maybe being a musician is not the best career choice I don't know it's, yeah. there's nothing safe about being a musician you know or you know somewhere in the music space um I know I mean if there is a safe way to do it then please someone let me know but so far yeah. it's kind of like we're all just kind of figuring it out as as we're going you know it's like you know we we've studied it we've been in the music business for a, for a while now and there's still new things that i'm learning and you know and plus the it's evolving still like the, through the internet everything's changing so fast new things are popping up and there's like new way to distribute your music and you know just a few years ago there wasn't even Shazam like and now it's yeah. like for indie artists that's like a big deal right it's like ooh what's the song you Shazam it right and you know and YouTube also like part of the magic I find with music is that you don't always understand why yeah. a song becomes really popular or why an artist all of a sudden gets exposure on somewhere yeah. like yeah. that that's magical about it is what yeah. makes it always interesting and why the industry mm -hmm. will always evolve and always change over time yeah oh I, I love find that, that. Really, I think that's a really creative no not creative like inspiring like environment to be around something that is always changing and we're going to sit here in 30 years and we will find new things to talk about within our industry <laughs> yeah. that is changing for better or for worse but it yeah. will be changing yeah yeah they'll be like what were you talking about like 10 years <laughs> like on this podcast yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about anymore <laughs> like <laughs> no literally <laughs> but um yeah it's it's weird but I mean that that's the beauty of it it's the magic and um I definitely I enjoy the roller coaster ride and um so not everyone has to agree with me on that not everyone needs to be you know doing that and that's okay like there's different people for different things that want to do different stuff and that's totally fine um exactly. so and yeah. how boring would it be if we all were trying to do this weird obscure <laughs> whatever washy feely thing that we're trying to do is <laughs> that wouldn't work yeah yeah exactly well plus if we were all the same it would kind of be boring right so yeah exactly you know um so yeah so like i said in the beginning i found your songs through spotify playlist spotify is like my number one streaming platform um i think it's really good for just indie artists in general i just love it it, it gives them more ex exposure i think than itunes i have both i use both but 99 percent yeah. of the time i use spotify 
again, either you hate it or you love it or you don't or whatnot, but mm. <laughs> that's how uh, I found your music anyway. And I don't remember which song I found first, but we're gonna, you have three released singles right now, right? Yeah. Okay, then I did, I could. That's what I'm doing, kind of doing my research in the right I know. direction. <laughs> I'm working on it. There's more stuff coming, but- yeah, I know you're every, bringing, you're working on an EP, right? You're working yes. on- um, if I'm being honest, right? Is that what it's going to be titled? Hmm? See, that is the title. <laughs> so right now you have, um, I don't want to be your friend. When I'm gone. And someone that I'm not. Made it real with every touch, and it all became too much. I think you made me into someone that I'm not. Make me feel like I was safe, so I'll try to let you in. And all three are really amazing, and I can't wait to like pick your brain um, <laughs> on them. Oh no. <laughs> nothing 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 um uh i don't know which one you want to go with first which one is like because i know you released them all in 2020 yeah mm -hmm. um so i guess we can start by talking about i don't want to be a friend uh -huh. So um, obviously that was my first single that I released mm -hmm. um, and that song, I, the reason, because when I told people that like were in my like network and knew, knew like a couple of my songs that I had at the time that I was debating which one to put out first, it to me never felt like a question that that had to be the one that came out first because mm -hmm. sonically, really represents where I want to be in the music industry mm -hmm. and where I see myself belonging mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then of course my sound is always going to change and I think also like when I'm gone say for example is way more electronic and hard than mm -hmm. someone like, like I don't, someone that I'm not it was, I don't want to be friendless but yeah it set me up in a place where I was like oh yeah it's like there'll be a pop hook mm -hmm. but there'll be weird little breaks of something and it'll yeah. take you on a journey most of the time and there'll totally. be weird sounds and a baby crying in the background but like that's where I feel at home yeah yeah um, and then also the story that the EP will be about that mm -hmm. when it comes out will kind of make more sense mm -hmm. that's kind of where the story started yeah like I don't want to be a friend tell me you love me again like it's obviously a heartbreak EP but it is yeah. to me a lot more than that it's like growing up figuring out who you are yeah um and a lot about being honest with yourself and when I wrote when I wrote that song or when I was starting to write it I had I was in a very cloudy headspace mm. and didn't really I'd like just finished uni I was about to move out of my flat with my mate I'd been with for two years mm. I was breaking up with someone and I was just losing all sense of who I was of mm -hmm. these outside factors mm -hmm. so when I started writing the song which I think you can tell in the lyrics in the first mm. verse I didn't really know what I was talking about Mm. Like, I was like, water's running in, filling up my lungs, falling further. Water's running in, filling up my lungs, falling further now, drowning in, I can't stop. Said I could count on you, so tell me, when was it that you came? Like, I knew I was really upset, yeah. but I didn't really know why. Know why. Mm. And a lot of that had to do with the relationship I was ending. Mm. I wasn't being honest with myself about how I was feeling. Mm. And then... So I wrote the, I wrote like the verse and the pre-chorus and the chorus um, in like in the winter months. And then I left the song for like five months, didn't touch it. It was just on a weird little piano loop mm -hmm. that I had like, I had an idea that what I wanted to do with it, but I wasn't really ready to deal with it yet. So I just yeah. put it aside, I was doing <laughs> other songs meanwhile yeah. to it. And then I wrote like second verse 
and I had like the whole concept for what I wanted Britain to be like and okay. then six months again after that I wrote the bridge and the last chorus and recorded all the vocals wow. and I think looking back so that's a song that took me like literally over a year to just write yeah. which is very uncommon for how I normally write songs normally yeah. I do them pretty fat like oh, I try to do all of it in a day so you mm. get that same feeling of whatever I'm trying to say in a song mm-hmm. within that day that I'm feeling it yeah totally but I think clear. looking back it's really interesting because of how my lyrics then developed over time mm-hmm. and what I wanted to say and how I got more and more angry yeah and then <laughs> that there's like in the end of the song there's like this whole calm down bit yeah, yeah. that it's just like a long outro that's 30 seconds long I think yeah. that was just because I was like I'm so I'm letting it go. I'm watching <laughs> this thing off. Um, so I think, yeah, that in retrospective is really interesting how that songwriting or the time periods of when the song was written is mm-hmm. really showcased yeah. the, how the song takes on your own journey. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, it makes now, because I've listened to it so many times and it's one of those songs that you listen to and every time you listen to it, something new pops up. Like it's not a song where you're like, oh, I'm just going to listen to this once. And, you know, I pretty much heard everything. Um, it's definitely that has like deeper element, especially, you know, as a songwriter, I think we're all kind of really like lyric p- people and we like to kind of, yeah. um, that's like the first thing usually that I hear out. Um, and so that, that was also one of the reasons um, that made me want to reach out because I'm like, Ooh, these lyrics like there there's more behind it and um I that's the best compliment someone could give me thank you very much <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> um you know it's um you can I mean also like we'll, we'll talk later about like the music video because that is amazing that takes you on a whole new different journey <laughs> um yeah. but um, how did you so like it took over like literally the lyrics like creating them was like a journey on its own how did you choose like the production for that did you already know what at the end like let's say you're done writing the song you're like okay this is uh, these are the lyrics um did you already know what sound you wanted or did that also like develop over time with the song does that make song. sense <laughs> um i think the production literally changed as i was or it came at the same time as I was writing the song. Mm. So like it just started with a piano loop in the verse, literally yeah. just like it is now. Yeah. So like there is literally these random chords that's happening in the first verse. And that's what we had in the beginning of the song. Water's running in, filling up my lungs. Falling further now, drowning in, I can't stop. And then I just wrote the whole song on that, but then that's where the song then started. We left that as what that was. Yeah. And then I would write the second verse, and I was like, okay, now I want this to sound like that or this like that. Yeah. And I I always knew what I wanted the song to feel like mm-hmm. in terms of the production. Mm-hmm. Or when I came or when I came back after having had a break from it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it just happened at the same time as I was writing the song. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not really, I know that some people will write a song yeah. and then they will do the full production afterwards. I don't normally work like that. I like to mm-hmm. do them intertwined with each other because mm-hmm. my melodies and my lyrics are going to have to reflect whatever is happening in the production. Yeah. And I find right. it easier personally to do it Simultan- simultaneously mm-hmm. yeah. rather than trying to be like oh I'm angry in this verse now I need to find an angry bass like it. that's not how that that I find that work hard to work around it like that so yeah. it did happen at the same time mm-hmm. yeah no I I just love asking that question because it's different with everyone like for it's so it's so interesting because obviously you never write the a song like the same way it always kind of the way it happens is usually different but we yeah. all kind of have our routine. I Routine is maybe not the best word to use here, but 
like we have kind of our, our way of how we approach a song and I didn't yeah, really notice that sorry yeah what we know works for us yeah exactly and then when you're collaborating and they're doing it completely different or me like talking with so many different musicians I'm like oh I didn't even know you could do it that way or you could you know mm. some exactly some do the production before and then add the lyrics and the top line and everything or add it at mm. the end or you know puzzling it together as they're going like I don't yeah. know Ooh, I find that works, the, the songs in general that I'm really fascinated about the lyrics and the melody and the production all really enhance each other and they all work together Mm -hmm. like that's what I find really interesting when things when a like the sound of a synth fits perfectly or does something opposite of what the vocal is trying to do like Mm -hmm. that's what I find that's what I always find interesting yeah so I guess that's what I'm trying to do as well with my own songs. Also because I will be so triggered if there's a piano sound in there that I do not like, then everything I'm going about to be singing and trying to write is going to not sound good. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't, I, I really admire people that can write or have a whole other production for something and then write the whole song and then change everything back afterwards. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, I could not do that. My, my brain is too much, I think is a, perfectionist thing or I'm too much in control or like I'm just maybe too sensitive and I'm get I get like so overwhelmed by all the impressions I think also I realized um a couple years ago that um I've got synesthesia which means that I am so super sensitive to all sounds because they will trigger a feeling or a color and then I will just if something sounds like too metallic Mm -hmm. and I will hate it and I will not want to work on it anymore so yeah 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 well I mean as long as like you reach the outcome like how you get there doesn't matter like if you have like like the end product I absolutely love how you get there I don't care I'll figure it out on the podcast when I talk to you but like at the end of the day it's not gonna be like but she did it differently so um it's less of a song and I'm like how are you gonna ever gonna know like <laughs> unless they tell you. all right so with um with um when i'm gone you think of me when i'm gone was that like a similar process because you said obviously like the lyrics took longer um with well with your first song um so did you already know what you wanted to write about or do you just like kind of sit down and just comes out when I'm gone so I that song is a that song I actually wrote before I don't want to be a friend Uh um and I was back home in Denmark and I always have this feeling of, I kind of feel like I'm living two lives. I have like one life that's in Denmark and one life that's in England. Yeah. And <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's this really both great thing. Cause once I'm in one place, my whole head is like there and I can't mm-hmm. really focus on whatever is happening in yeah. the other location, but it also makes it complicated and to sometimes have relationships with people whether that's family or friends and stuff or it took me a long time to figure out how am I gonna yeah how am I gonna do this how am I gonna be on my phone Mm. for people two different countries and then also make time but yeah anyway so I was on a bus just thinking about how I literally feel so disattached from people in Mm. my life a lot of the time Mm. and how that is really isolating feeling sometimes yeah um feeling like you are just you don't belong either place as yeah. well yep <laughs> and I was just also going through a lot of other kind of sad depressing feelings and I just wrote that song about not really wanting to bother anymore with uh, anything yeah yeah um, so that song is definitely about mental health and kind of thinking about what it would be like if you just weren't there anymore and if anyone would care if you were yeah. not there yeah um, so that's a really sad song, mm-hmm. actually, just about depression. But mm-hmm. luckily, I, I don't feel like that anymore. <laughs> but it was just diving into that feeling, and I wrote down, 
I wrote that down the, all my lyrics ideas in the bus and then I got home to England mm. met up with a friend and I was like I want to write about this thing mm. and we just the whole song within that session and then the production actually in that case wow. were all done afterwards mm-hmm. oh okay so it does <clears throat> opposite of I don't want to be a friend yeah (laughs) well I mean that's the beauty of it isn't it it's like that's what fascinates me about like creating songs is like you'll never know how it's going to happen like you never know when inspiration is going to hit you never know like how you're going to be doing it you just know that you're gonna (laughs) yeah (laughs) and I think as well what then happened when I was writing the song on the or writing the lyric ideas I knew what was the chorus going to be? And I was like, I'm going to need a really big dramatic bass to hit in that chorus. Oh, yeah. To be like almost cinematic so you don't actually realize how sad the song is. Yeah. In the sea, deep everything that I know Will you think of me when I'm gone? <laughs> and like... <laughs> So I knew how I wanted the sound. So that's why I think in that situation, it was okay for me to write the whole thing in like one session with the guy and then come back for months and months and perfect it and perfect it because mm. I knew where I wanted it to be. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's I, now that you're saying this, like all of the, the music videos are making more and more sense. Like this is, I can't wait to talk about those because they're epic. <laughs> Um, well, thank you. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, these are, I think, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I think these are like thoughts that like the majority of us are like struggling with, but we kind of keep to ourselves. Nobody really talks about it. Like, you know, I struggle with depression and then, you know, luckily I had songwriting to get me out of that. Um, and I think that is something that nobody really talks about and it's kind of like this touchy feely subject and it took me a while to even admit that I had to go to therapy because it's like oh if you go to therapy then there's something wrong with you like what's going so it, it, now I'm open about it and I talk about it the majority of time and I have a couple of episodes on here where we just talk about mental health um, and music and stuff like that um, so I know and um we kind of talked about this in our private conversation, um, you know, how important mental health is. And you had an Instagram post on there um, that I thought was very powerful. Um, if you don't mind, I'll just read it out real quick. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Cause <clears throat> I, I don't thought, know which one it is. So I'm like, whoa, what have I written down? <laughs> it's the one uh, with your journal. So it says, um, oh, yeah. you wrote the poem. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's mental health awareness week. So, uh, sorry, I'm butchering this. So I thought I would share a poem I wrote a while back and then you kind of go on and it says, I want to make something very clear. Don't ever feel like you have to act like you're fine, not for yourself and not for the sake of others. My least favorite phrase in the English language is I'm fine. I'm not sure about you, but I have no idea what fine is even meant to feel like my point is sometimes gray clouds take a long time to pass and there's no set time frame for how long it takes us to heal and that's okay um it it goes on a bit longer but that's kind of like the essence of it is you know not giving us the time to really feel it and to really like let it in and express it and we feel like we're kind of you know letting it out on our family and friends and kind of being annoyed or annoying um mm-hmm. so uh i really appreciate when people like speak out about mental health and um when it comes to music because i think um it's definitely a tool that helps with it like i mean you wrote a poem but also you just said like when i'm gone it's just one of those thoughts that needed to come out yeah i think so many so many thoughts in my head um (laughs) take your time (laughs) I think it becomes this thing for me personally where it's like I'm always a friend that takes care of everyone else and Mm. family members as well so I've got a hard time although I'm also really good at articulating everything I'm feeling 
Mm -hmm. people often make the mistake then to think oh well because she can talk about it she's fine or she's Mm -hmm. dealing with it Mm -hmm. whereas like that's not actually necessarily how it is just because I'm good at articulating my emotions towards something doesn't mean then that I'm good at dealing with it in private Mm -hmm. and um, I think when I wrote when I'm gone I just felt like such a burden Mm -hmm. for people around me Mm -hmm. and that feeling of like I said before of never feeling like you belong because you've got two sets of friends and family in two different mm. countries <laughs> yeah and you don't so then you like do this like jumping back and forth like you can yeah. also do that with your if you're just living in one country where like yeah. you jump to one friend group and then you annoy them for a little bit mm. and like yeah. put your burdens on them and then you go to another friendship group yeah. and put your burdens yeah. on them <laughs> yeah and I think it's just really important to talk about how it is okay to be really upset for years if that's what is real to you mm. I think it it's really hard how there is a social pressure sometimes that okay now well it's been six months since you lost your job or you broke up with your partner or your dad passed away mm. now we move on mm-hmm. like you might never move on yeah. and that's okay then you just need to find a way where it's cope like you can cope with it mm. um and I'm also just not a person that's very tolerable to um, wishy-washy conversation. Like mm-hmm. If you're having a chat and if you're in my life, then let's be real with each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and if my friend is going through a hard time for years, then that's okay too. Yeah. Then we will keep talking about it. And if it's important to let your friends know that it never becomes boring to talk about the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah yeah I yeah when I read that post I'm just like yes this is someone <laughs> that you know is doesn't shy away from the real talk that doesn't you know is just real and I think it's I thought it was interesting because I was always like reading through your bio and stuff um you know um the EP that you're working on right now is called if I'm being honest right and um you know and I thought it was interesting that someone would title an ep um that's just like in that way and dedicate an entire i think six tracks um at least that was like the last update <laughs> always no no it in. is six tracks yeah um uh, you know to honesty and i thought wow like that is the bravest thing that anyone can do because that's hard honesty <laughs> like 100 like honesty and being real is super hard and i think like again coming back circling back to like the mental health aspect that's something I wasn't honest um, in the beginning and I think I needed that time also to kind of process that and not associate that with shame anymore and I can learn how to deal with loss with um, depression and just my emotions emotions in general um, where I'm like okay I'm not feeling good right now (laughs) and I'm not okay right now and um you know but I can be or I will be or I'm working on it or you know whatever that is whatever that looks for you um and that's okay so I mean I want to just appreciate you and acknowledge you for Mm. you know just being honest (laughs) as I think that's our that's a journey that yeah no but and I think it's so much easier said than done Mm. yeah like all my songs that are on the EP, which is why I titled the EP, if I'm being honest, it came from a place of not being very honest with myself mm-hmm. yeah. about whatever I was going through, whether that was yeah, my depression or that one heartbreak I was going through with someone. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all came as like, okay, I've been bo- boiling it in. Mm-hmm. And now here's like the outburst of how I actually feel about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think that's something I, I'm still, I feel like it's sometimes also very easy to be honest with other people, but not always easy to be honest with yourself. With yourself, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just part of growing older and getting to know yourself as well better and stuff. Yeah. But I just really do believe that once you are honest with yourself, like that will set you free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. From, from your depression or your heartbreak or just whatever whatever thing it might be that is triggering you in your life um 
yeah I think mm. honesty is something I appreciate about all my friendships and my relationships I have with people and how I want to talk to people if we can't have a real conversation then I'm not really interested in the most respectful way mm -hmm. that can be said mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of conversations are very surface level. And we're like, oh, how are you doing? Yeah, okay, fine. I'm doing good. Like, that's like the first response, right? It's like, oh, yeah, it's, I'm good. Uh, yeah. And we all do it. I do it as well sometimes because I also choose who do I want to be honest with. Mm, ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. But then I think, like, I don't need to be honest with the people I like, meet at a a work party or like whoever but I think it is honestly it, it's yeah. important as long as you you communicate your honesty at least to yourself mm. and at least to the people that matter to you mm. like if we all go around and we're just honest about everything that we feel if we're having a complication at work with someone that will go down not very well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I think the advice I always give like any of my friends when they're going through something is like if you've got a problem with something just communicate it because it's about how you say it mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely <laughs> like yeah. that old saying I feel like my mom is like plastered in my head like it's yeah. not about what you say it's what about you how say. you say it exactly yeah um and I just always try to live by that mm. to the point where it's my detriment mm -hmm. and I wear my heart on my sleeve and it yeah. becomes too much some people and I am just um to like like danish bluntness sometimes <laughs> i think it's just like my danish bluntness i think that is just who i am yeah yeah because of my upbringing and having like parents that got divorced when i was six and i felt like no one was telling me what the hell was going on and mm. i now have some like self-righteousness to like make sure i live my adult life being yeah. really honest with myself and everyone yeah. around me because i don't yeah. want to keep people in the dark about things yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait for the EP to come out because, <clears throat> first of all, it's like something like I just love the title that you chose for the EP. I mean, that already is like already like super enticing. And I'm like, oh, like I can't wait for like, um, plus you said it's like it's like a story, like all of them. You said that. Um, what was it? Um, I don't want to be your friend. Right. Is like the that kind of kicked off the entire thing that kind of how do you say that English words uh kind of flows in to like the entire EP right they kind of belong together is that what I yeah mean? did I know it is right? it is like first of all it's like they were all written in a very concise time frame of like a yeah. year and a half uh -huh. and um it was a story of going through heartbreak and then finding back to yourself and then realizing oh I'm not actually really grieving over heartbreak I'm grieving over trying to find out who I am mm. as a young adult mm. um but then the what really ties us on together for me is that they all came from a place of just pure honesty with myself and the situations I was going through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's how like for me personally they belong together like mm -hmm. I write some songs and they will just like be how I'm feeling and like I will let people know that's how I'm feeling but all these songs came from such a place of being so hurt that I wasn't really talking about how I was feeling and kind of denying myself how I was feeling about something yeah. and then those songs came out and I was like oh, okay I have to kind of deal with how I'm feeling about this yeah. <laughs> now I have to deal with all of it yeah <laughs> and also in retrospect when I've like shown the song to some like the song to the people that are like close to my life they're like oh we, we knew you were feeling like that and I was like well I didn't know I was feeling like that why didn't you tell me I was feeling like that <laughs> yeah. like, well, hello could you could have given me a call tell me something tell me why this is a hard time for me <laughs> yeah I, yeah that's it's hilarious beautiful to be able to look back on your life and go oh okay yeah it was sure. so obvious we'll make that yeah. yeah oh it's just really teenage angst I was just being really melodramatic about something yeah <clears throat> yeah <laughs> I'm not laughing because I'm not laughing because this is but I'm laughing because this is exactly how I how I felt like just, and I think the majority of people can relate because we're just like you know when it's just right in front of your face for some reason you just mm -hmm. don't see it everyone around you it's like so obvious but like for you it's like you're you yeah. right 
And so <laughs> it's, it's good to know that you're not the only one that's feeling that way. So thanks for like pointing that out. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm like the only one. Like, it's so funny how we think like we're the only people that's dealing with these problems and they're so unique and so different from anyone else. Like, of course, they all have their, you know, little, um, yeah little differences but like the this the, the the foundation of the problem is usually the same for the human experience is the same exactly yeah just the or way we get different. there and experiences may be a little bit different but like the foundation is usually the same and i'm just shocked the more and more people i talk to the more i'm realizing how normal it is what i'm feeling and thinking and struggling with and going through and all that stuff yeah. so yeah that's that's that too <laughs> that's laugh a little um so <laughs> i wrote really big amazing media music videos can you read that? <laughs> amazing video yeah see thank you so much i think that's something i i really Oh, no, I'll, I'll let you say how you feel about the videos and then I'll say about like how I maybe what I try to do with them. All right, because I mean, the, the longer we were talking more about your, you know, the songs and stuff, um, the more I'm like realizing because I watched they're so good that I watched them multiple times because again, <laughs> I feel like it's just with the songs, like the more you watch it, the more you're picking out stuff and like, oh, I, I missed this one or I, I, I didn't realize that and the connection to the lyrics and the way you're telling the story, it feels really specific and feels um, like you have a real, a real direction that you wanted to go through to like portray. And that's just, I don't know if that's how you really did it or stuff. This is like from a viewing perspective, yeah. um, that's how I really like felt. Cause you're like, for, for some scenes, you're just like, Ooh, what's happening. And then some scenes are like, okay, what's happening here? Like, it's like a little bit disturbing, but like, not like, what like what the heck so it's like it throws you off a little bit but then you know then in the next scene it makes sense and you kind of tie it together really well where it's like you're just constantly on this emotional roller coaster where you never know what's really going to happen in them um so i don't know if th that's kind of what i felt <clears throat> at least um with uh which one was it um uh, well with uh i don't want to be your friend is in general like so many different scenes and then you have like the beach then you have the forest which looks amazing and the fog coming in and then you're like in your house on the floor it's like so dramatic and then the music it's so the dramatic yeah and, like and I'm just like well I had to like rewatch it a couple of times to kind of like take it in understand the um, whole thing yeah so no, I think that's what I love about visuals in, in general yeah. like for, I, I love like can you hear the lawnmower in the background I'll just close the window um I think I always want to tell a different side of us of the song in the videos mm -hmm. also because mm -hmm. there's only so much you can say with like with lyrics yeah. in the song sometimes yeah. like why wouldn't you then expand on it and I think yeah. I literally the majority of my time on my phone is spent watching music videos yeah like I just love that whole universe and I always have and then especially also because with my dancing and everything yeah. I'm so physical with my body I want to use that in my videos mm -hmm. that's what feels like makes the most sense to me yeah and then um for example with I don't want to be your friend mm -hmm. I had this because of like my I have such an idea of like what universe my song lips in and what color the the uh, choruses or verses and that kind yeah. of stuff I wanted to why not use that in the visuals so yeah. um, with I don't want to be a friend in particular that whole song is so like whiny and like I don't want to be a friend you piss me off and then yeah. he wrote a song about it and now here I am singing back like, it's so <laughs> so extreme so I wanted the yeah. video to kind of show a different side that shows okay well I'm upset and hurt about something that's happened, yeah. but we are two individuals in this thing. And I wanted to somehow take responsibility in the video and show that whole mystical, dreamy sensation you feel when you're back and forth with someone and you don't know where you are with them. And I wanted to 
instead of having them in these like normal day settings this couple in the video or yeah. myself and the guy who's with in the video mm. instead of being on the on like a table or in home in a bedroom and stuff like that i wanted to take it to the extreme like make mm. it fantastic and whimsical and yeah because that's what it feels like when you're in a in a relationship like that yeah. with someone yeah. Like it just feels so out of this world. Like, oh yeah. my God, no one can relate to me. Yeah. I am going through this unique experience. So yeah, I wanted yeah. that to kind of feel like that in the video as yeah. well. And totally, that has like this magical feeling, almost like this fairy tale kind of like you're walking through, like with the moss and then the fog. It feels like you're in this like really fairy tale magic forest. Like it's it's uh right like it, you like you hit it right on the nail. It's like you're just taking the the people through all these emotions and these scenes, right? And then but then you also have like a fight scene in that like magical forest. So it's kind of like, you know, that push and pull moment um which, you know, I know you're probably going to talk about it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but with with that one in particular, um like some things happen in a video and you have a, a, an exact idea of why you're going to be doing something. Like I had a whole thing with the whole berries thing, which I don't want to tell because I think some things you have to like figure out for yourself and make your own meaning of it. But mm -hmm. then other things like just happens. And I always had this like, idea of I wanted to be physical with my body, but I didn't want to be doing kissing. Mm -hmm. Although I might as well have been doing that in the video, but I, mean, I didn't he looks do that. Very good. I couldn't blame you. He's a nice guy. He's in a relationship, but <laughs> didn't work out this time. Um, but I and I think like in that scene where we are fighting with each other, we're also really, really physically attached to each other. Yeah, yeah. Like although we are fighting, it's like we cannot live without each other. We like need to physically be close to each other and I think that that's just what I wanted to come across with those scenes that mm. that feeling yeah. like yeah I can't live without you but I can't live with you so what yeah. the hell am I gonna do <laughs> exactly I mean and that and that's kind of the roller coaster that you're taking like right in the beginning you just see like all these scratches on the back and you're just like what the heck could just happen here right and then you kind of explain it through the through the video and you're like oh okay it makes sense like and, and stuff like that uh, like yeah. how do you how do you plan, like, how do you bring, because you obviously had a team to, to film um, the video. How do you, first of all, like, have the, how do I phrase this question? Like, because <laughs> for me, it's like so hard to have something like, first of all, it's one thing knowing what you want and how you want it to look like and then planning it out and then communicating it to a team. So they have the same vision and you're kind of working on it together. Um, so whatever's like in your head can actually become reality. Um, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, well, what happened was I had found like a director that I really liked. I liked his work that he'd been doing. Yeah. He hadn't really done much of what I had in mind for the video, but I was like, I feel like he can do it. So then I like, I spoke to him, we instantly just, hit it off and like understood each other really well and I told him about obviously got really into detail about what I'd been going through and what I wanted the video to like symbolize and all that kind of stuff and what I wanted the viewer to get from it and then um he just like got it and we did loads of mood boards and I think mm -hmm. with those kind of things the more specific you are and yeah. So this is my, I was like, I don't want to do things in the bed. I don't want to yeah. be doing things walking down the street. So yeah. I was like, I want to be the exact opposite. I want to be in yeah. nature. Mm -hmm. And so like that instantly like limits then like, okay, what's doable? And then he had like the idea of like, okay, well, I also really wanted to shoot the video back in Denmark. Yeah. Um, that was going to be my next Because question. I love the nature there. Yeah. Yeah. So we shot the video in Denmark, like an hour away from Copenhagen up in this yeah. like beautiful beach area where there is also like forests right at the beach um and then we were just rather you want to call it lucky or unlucky but it was like so it rained the whole morning when uh -huh. we got out to shoot um and we only had one day to shoot the scenes outside um uh -huh. all of them like the forest the beach like all of it all the four yeah all of that was one, day. one day wow yeah, then, <laughs> um yeah it was it was very optimistic yeah. um so we got there and then it stopped raining but uh -huh. then that had done that the whole thing looked like wet uh -huh. so that then meant that when the light came in it was all like misty and like 
very nice looking of course then we had like the show smoke machine to make yeah, it yeah, even yeah. more extreme and stuff yeah, like that yeah, but yeah. um i think when it comes to doing visuals if you've got an idea it's just finding out how do you execute it mm. like with the team around you i've done quite a lot of production things with show mm -hmm. before um so i've got quite a good understanding of how to do it and then you just learn by doing it like now i feel so equipped to when i'm doing videos because i know exactly also i learn so much because mm -hmm. i want to be involved with everything because i've got yeah. such an idea of where i see myself with my videos and music mm. that i want to just learn so yeah. i know now what lenses i like on stuff and what kind of color grading i want to do and what kind of shots are but that's all something you just learn mm. learn as you're going if you have interest in it as well mm. and also you don't want to be the kind of person that tells the director how to shoot something so you <laughs> yeah. want to be yeah, respectful yeah, like obviously yeah. yeah like they know better than you do and then it's like finding the people that you trust will know how to communicate what you're trying to communicate mm. yeah that, i mean and that's with anything whether that's music producers yeah. or exactly photographer for your artwork that you're doing or whatever is like finding people that you trust will understand what you're doing and if you know how to communicate what you want and if you're specific enough with your references and then that hopefully should make mm. make you happy with the end result somewhere yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i just love it when when a when a song that you write in your room or in, on the bus or wherever you you inspired you like literally come alive not just like just on like a mp3 level but like on you know video level like not that you can just hear it but you can actually visualize it and like see it come to life um you know and i think that's why your music videos just fascinated me so much because they're like oh this is like a clear like it just everything fixes together everything just works together like the the song with the visuals and the story and everything because basically what music really is a storytelling that's mm. where it originated from really um 100 yeah so when when i'm gone i'm just i'm almost done with the music video questions but when i'm gone i thought it was so cool with like how did you do the butterfly thing like i'm just like how does like the butterfly first of all how long did you take it take you to shoot that and then how did you get it like perfectly on your eye and like on your shoulders or this is like such a weird story like no one believes me when I tell them but I grew them myself I bred butterflies at home myself for a month and a half yeah <laughs> okay I was I was expecting a lot of answers but not this one <laughs> not that one no I know wow. so it was quarantine I've literally loved butterflies my whole life I was like what am I gonna do with myself I might as well find something that I can never do again. <laughs> and it that became breeding butterflies. How cool is that? <laughs> so yeah, I did the um, bred the butterflies at home, literally just found like a guide how to do it online, found a website, <laughs> got them in. I bear in mind I had no idea whether or not it was actually gonna work. Yeah. Um had to go out every single day getting like stinging nettles, put them in this like little like cage I had for them. And they just grew and at one point they became butterflies <laughs> they're like we need so, to shoot now we need to their butterflies to like, go, yeah go, go. i was i was lucky that my partner is also the first i do all my visuals with so oh, okay um we were obviously in lockdown and we had time to do such a weird project like mm -hmm. waiting for the butterflies when are they going to be ready to to go mm -hmm. <clears throat> so like the whole thing was doing around where we live and the forest and the, this little river that I discovered one day we went out for a walk and then the butterflies I think we did that maybe over two days but we didn't do that many hours because obviously the, the butterflies were just like going crazy and we were yeah. very aware about doing animal cruelty yeah. and we also knew that because when you for the butterflies when you before you set them free it's best to let them wait like a couple of days mm -hmm. before they, their wings are strong enough to fly off mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. in that case it was it wasn't actually that bad we just they became so tame because they've been around us for like so oh. long I'm assuming that's why okay. and we put like I had on my body I had like sugar water mm -hmm. hoping that that would make them stay oh didn't help? actually really put the sugar water oh I don't think it did, but um <gasps> the heat what they liked on my body 
Oh, okay. Because okay. we were obviously in a bathroom, which yeah. isn't, it, we didn't have Warmest water bed. running or anything like that. Yeah. So I think they were like, oh, heat, we like uh-huh. that. So they just, we literally just took them out of the cage, put them on me, hoped uh-huh. they would stay. But it was a lot like one flew off and we had to try to get it back. But it was just filming a lot of things and hoping that something turned out, which it did. Well, it looks really impressive for sure. Like there's just the one that's like ri- like next to your eye, and it's just like this yeah. close up, and it's like so dramatic, and you know, and it it just, I mean, it fits the song, obviously. Um, you know, especially now that we talked about it before, like now, like all of this is making like so much sense, and uh, but I'm like, I was just like, I saw that scene, and I'm like how in the world did she pull that off? Because like one butterfly, okay. But there were like multiple butterflies butterflies in the shot. I'm yeah. like, we how do you get them to like, what, 39? We had 39 butterflies. That's how many we actually ended up having. In the shot, they weren't all there at the same time. No, because no, we were no, no. Bobbing around and stuff. And like a lot of them were just in the room as we were filming. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there were a lot to choose from. And it wow. was, it wasn't, it wasn't weird in the beginning, like having them crawl on you, but you just, you just get on with it. If you want to have a cool video, <laughs> suck it up and you just go with it. Things we do for our art, right? <laughs> oh, yes. That's a weird one. I would do it all again, though, because it was like so special watching something grow from these yeah. tiny little larvae to like be beautiful butterflies and set them free. That was so euphoric. It was really special. I recommend it. Yeah, it's this is really random, but like through the t- COVID thing, um, I work for a company that delivers packages and mail, and so we I had a lot to do over COVID. And mm-hmm. there was one, um, there was a little package, and it said, um, uh, obviously in German, but it said like aware living animals, and I'm like, since when do we? <laughs> deliver living animals and you know these are people I saw every day right uh because you always have the same route that you take and so I knew the yeah. people I'm like so what's going on with this package here I've got something for you she's like oh those are the butterflies um there's just like not the, the butterfly finish butterfly but just like the you know this oh, better <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so just the, the beginning stage and then um you know obviously I came every day and bring brought different packages and all that stuff and then she kind of always kept me updated on like oh so how's the butterfly doing <laughs> so, so that's kind of like random story but no, uh, funny. you know I didn't know up till then that you could just go and you know be like oh I'm just gonna order a butterfly, a butterfly. <laughs> and then, yeah <laughs> yeah it was, it was definitely really <clears throat> really unique experience <laughs> so like a live oh, animal sure. and it's like a package is like this big like, like yeah. super small I'm like what's gonna sometimes they came in these like small like I don't know what they call them like plastic glass kind of thing like was how I got them. not a tube because uh-huh. it was like round and like oh. flat yeah I don't know what they're called there's a name for it okay well I don't know I've never grown I've delivered them to houses before but I've never yeah. like, grown them myself uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, there uh, there are a couple more questions and then you know I want to appreciate your time um, is there I want to make sure I'm getting the right ones um, I've got all the time you just ask <laughs> um, is there a lyric that you're specifically like not proud as in like oh look at me but like really like you know this this one is meaning this is like important to me um or you know a a special meaning where you're like yeah this is like a a really good lyric of mine that I that I'm that I'm just like proud of like a good sense of proud to like um let me just think the first thing that pops into head is on the song that's on the interlude of the EP, which isn't out yet. Mm. But I should probably not say that one because <laughs> you have can't go and listen to it. Oh, uh, dang um, it. I, I, I was hoping I was getting something. <laughs> so. um, mm, I think, oh, this is such a, my, I've got no things in my head right now. I think um, the the first version when I'm gone, which goes, 
which I can't even remember right now. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Like imagery. Yeah, putting me on the spot too much. Um, it's because basically the verse I always get the two verses made up with each other. That's why I'm like, which one is it? Um, <laughs> no, you know what? I'll say another one. There is this uh, little thing in the um, when I'm gone that says, "Will you forget my name? My mum will call you up and give you all the blame." Will you forget my name? My mum will call you up, give you all the blame. Won't open up my eyes. No, For some reason, I really like that lyric just yeah. because the, it kind of contradicted the whole song because I was so like, when I'm gone, everyone is going to forget me, that kind of thing. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, my mum is actually not going to forget me. She's yeah. going to like blame everyone for making me feel like this. Mm -hmm. And it's such a like tucked little thing in there that I don't think yeah. you really notice. I, I like that one mm -hmm. a lot. But you know what? I will tell you the one on the uh, interlude. It says, if I'm being honest with myself, I clinged on very well. Oh. Um, which kind of explains the whole EP, that one line, I think. Yeah. Um, which I won't dwell on very much what that means to me, yeah. that line. But I, okay. it, I'll it, take it explains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it, it kind of sets on the tone for me as of what everything else in is about. Mm -hmm. like clinging on to whatever version of yourself or relationship or mm -hmm. whatever that is but that one I think sums up what the whole EP is about mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one I mean that's why it makes a lot of sense to put it in the interlude I love interludes to an EP or an album like I think it's something that's so underrated and when it's on an album I'm like oh yes interlude <laughs> <laughs> I found it so difficult to write it because I wrote it so retrospective mm. that I had so moved on from everything I was going through. Yeah. Which made it hard to feel like, made it hard to remember, oh, okay, this is what I actually want to say mm -hmm. about this whole thing. Or like knowing what, because often when I start a project or like this is my first project that's coming out, so then that's mm -hmm. a different story. But when I yeah. wrote all these songs, I didn't know where it was gonna go obviously mm -hmm. so then listening to the whole EP back and then being like okay this is how then actually that all makes sense yeah but that whole thing was about in retrospective you like you gain understanding of yourself mm -hmm. like okay that's why I did all those things to myself I mean I think it kind of makes sense to have it like have a little bit of distance so you can actually see like oh okay, like the overarching thing is actually this. And then you can pinpoint it, I think, a little bit better than when you're like right in the middle of it, right? It's like, if it's like, again, like coming back, <laughs> like full circle, if it's like right in front of your face, it's so hard to see it. But once you get a little yeah. bit of distance from the EP or the album or whatever, the single, I think um, it gives you that unique perspective to be like, okay, I've been on the journey. I've gone through it. <laughs> like what do I want like what is this really like yeah. you know um so I think no, maybe that was quite helpful yeah I like I think I found out what I wanted to say when it was or I realized what it was meant to be that I was trying to say but it was hard just figuring out I don't know I think it's it's painful to like try to tap back into those feelings once you've actually passed them Mm -hmm. sometimes even more painful than when you're actually going through it like I think back to things I did to myself and I'm like why would I do that to my yeah. you get angry at yourself mm -hmm. I I get so angry about when I think about the situations those different songs were written about because I could have I was in charge of myself I was my own human I could have completely dealt with those situations very differently yeah but for some reason I didn't so like it was painful to tap back into it and be like holy shit you know take better care of yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like that that was like it and I'm happy I did so then it feels like it there's a there's a it makes sense with the interlude I think when you hear it mm. that it's on there yeah but yeah, I was it was not nice having to go back and like try to revisit because once once you've written a song it then becomes about like oh the visuals and the artwork and trying to make a business plan and like that's what then makes it exciting again like it's mm -hmm. not just been written from a obviously if it's a happy song you're not gonna feel the same way I'm sure I just don't yeah. write a lot of happy songs <laughs> but um that's my own problem but I think you so quickly become disassociated with 
how you're feeling on that day when you're writing something because it just becomes excitement and mm. I think that's also why I spend so much time on doing visuals for my songs and stuff and mm. one like giving the song to new meaning but also um tapping out of sometimes how I was feeling with it mm. and giving like new new life or yeah. positive spin mm -hmm. yeah or uh, just a different perspective you know, like you said, yeah. it's like, that's why you love music videos, because you can add a perspective um, that you can't do with music, right? Yeah. So. Like when I did I Don't Want to Be a Friend, I felt so bad. I feel like I'm a terrible person for writing the song. <laughs> I can't put it out. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what, if I just take a little bit of responsibility in the video, then maybe I can like get away with like saying all these ter terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't, uh, you, you didn't like disregard it. Like it, you brought it out no. in the music video. Um, Cause it's amazing. Like I said, like that was like the first thing, like real bold, real big was just amazing music videos. Like, <laughs> Uh, so yeah I'm just I'm glad how it worked out um, I'll have two more questions and then I'll let you go one is if you could go to bed tonight and wake up with a skill that you could do perfectly which one would it be Ooh. I want to say um oh can I choose two because like one is like not really a skill or do I have to choose just one <laughs> go ahead you can have you can have one and a half <laughs> okay i'll go um one uh be able to fully produce my songs myself i'm mm -hmm. like learning and i'm getting there slowly but i still have to rely on other people because i just can't do it as good as like my friends that i do it with can mm -hmm. obviously like that would be that's the goal that i can get better and better at that but then also on the other side i've got a different perspective because i'm not the one sitting and playing with the eqs yeah but yeah. i'll have the language to know to how to make someone change it to the sound i want so it's like mm -hmm. both a good and a bad thing mm. but um otherwise i would say forgiveness to myself more than other people wow that was the first <laughs> in my head. that was the first one that popped into your head yeah Dang. i don't know why wow like we just be very it. nice if, if we could just forgive ourselves for being useless or not working as hard as we want to do or mm. having a hard time forgiving other people or having done bad things to yourself or that kind of stuff I think that's also like ties in with I think I was saying about why it was painful to tap into the EP again when I wrote the interlude mm -hmm. wow yeah I've never gotten that answer before that <laughs> uh, but you know it's it is actually quite you know it's necessary I think we're I think we're way harder on ourselves than we would ever be with other people and for yeah. some reason we think it's okay when we do it to ourselves um yeah and so yeah that's I applaud that yeah for sure yeah we should all be working on it yeah yeah it's a working progress I think you're never like oh okay I'm done like I've, I got there like at the end of my journey like that's not uh yeah that's not the point of it anyway. It's like growth is, you know, when does it end? Who, mm. knows? Um, Who knows? Exactly. For the, the last question I like to ask, it's always pretty much the same on every episode. My closing question uh, is, what makes a good song for you? A good song is mm. a song that makes me feel like something. Rather that is shaking my booty, Mm. cry my eyes out but if it doesn't evoke some kind of feeling yeah that's not the song that I'm gonna really be interested in also I have a because I'm such a lyricist I need to know what the song is about mm. and that doesn't mean that a song can't be uh, like I love poetry and like things that are really obscure and like sometimes my lyrics are really obscure and that's fine but if I have no idea what you're trying to tell me with the song yeah. if it doesn't come from a perspective of like if you if you got a voice and you're writing a song, then you use it for something. Try to say something to me. Rather yeah. that is you don't know what to say. Just have a purpose with why I'm spending my time listening to the song. Like mm -hmm. I need to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a perfect song for me. If like if someone is if you can tell that someone really has something that they want to say with the song, mm -hmm. then that makes it powerful. 
Wow. It's good that we're ending it right here. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good mic drop moment. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that's that's actually really good. Yeah, I just love asking that question. It seems like such a mm. simple question. Like every musician should know this, but funny enough, it's always a different answer every single time. <laughs> yeah, so. I think because it's like if you, or at least for me, I love so much different music. Like, but a song can be good on one chord, and it can be good on ten chords. Or mm -hmm. like a million chords and yeah. with no production at all or like the biggest production in the whole world i yeah. think it, that's what makes music really interesting yeah there. and you know what like you can even do it without lyrics because i love instrumentals yeah like yeah. producers like i love producers like taurus or one of my good friend joe turner they are so amazing and they don't have any lyrics on their songs at all. And there are no vocalists, yeah. but I know exactly what they're trying to do with their instrumentation. I think that's mm -hmm. so mesmerizing. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, music alone already to speaks to you. And if you throw lyrics, on, I mean, that's just like the mega explosion, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, you know, that's the beauty. I mean, music just does its own thing. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's why I want to, I just want to acknowledge you for, um, someone that I'm not I watched the live acoustic version and talking about like simplicity and like stripping it back you just have your voice a cello which I think is really cool because my mom plays the cello so it just has a very special place in my heart and um, just a guitarist on there right it's mm. just like that's it and it sounds so cool like just mm, the dynamics you. of the song just the three of you had me hooked for the yeah. entire thing you know and that's again just kind of kind of underlining the like you don't need the fancy production you don't need every like all of that like sometimes you know everything is said with three instruments just a vocal mm -hmm. <laughs> cello and the guitar and that's it and well um, thank you so much yeah i i love that yeah so thank you i just want really i just want to th say thank you for you know pushing through and putting out the songs even though you were kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> thinking not to and you know and it's hard you know being a musician and wearing your heart on the sleeve is hard and um it comes with its own challenges but it comes also with its own you know beauties and mm. rewards and I just want to thank you for being on that journey and sharing it and I can't wait for you your EP yeah, to come out so do you have a date or not or I can't talk about that yet okay well Anyway, when it comes out, <laughs> when it comes out, it comes out, and I will let you know. Okay. Yes. Thank please. you so much for having me. I'm so happy. Just people care enough. Yeah. Or like care at all. Yeah. No, I happy. care. Yeah, I care about I'm music. Very, very grateful for. Oh, grateful. thank you. Um. Yeah. So, where can people check you out? Where can they find you? Where are all the platforms to find you and your music? find my music on well i'm obviously on all the different streaming platforms under yeah. ida just spelled ida last name just mm -hmm. um you got the wrong way around um <laughs> and then my insta handle is literally just my name so ida just and you will find me on youtube and instagram and facebook i'm not really on twitter i mean i have a profile but i will not be tweeting on there so <laughs> and if you want to see really bad content on tiktok i'm there sometimes too but not really <laughs> That. perfect okay so i'm gonna link up everything as well so people have no trouble finding you i had no trouble finding you because it's very easy it's just Ida, just on all the platforms streaming platforms social media whatever um and website as well you have a website well, um, i do yes, i do <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so there yeah so uh, the website i think is Ida just as well right just Ida just .com. Yeah. um and i said so easy yeah no easy. excuses not to check it out exactly exactly plus i'm linking it up all as well so there are absolutely no excuses to so scroll down to the description box and everything is right there and um yeah again thank you for your time and i thank can't wait so for much me. having me <laughs> me too thank you so much for listening to the musician secrets podcast i appreciate your time because you could literally be doing a bazillion other things right now but you're here with me so thank you if you want you can scroll all the way to the bottom and leave a comment on how you're liking the podcast what you've learned and things you've even implemented that have helped you out 
As a little thank you, I put together a free members area with all my best resources, books, podcasts, and online courses about everything you need to know as an independent musician, from producing to songwriting to marketing to building a home studio, all the good stuff. All you have to do is either click the link below or go to elisecoa.com slash free. I'll see you on the other side. Bye.